Take a look at a variety of new and exciting events and some possible new directions for the coming year. But the most exciting event, I think, uh, and the most exciting direction for me these days is the emergence of the World Wide Web as a phenomenal environment uh, for uh, publishing, for reading, for exploring, for learning, for communications, for entertainment, and for services. We've just seen the beginning, or really the Model T era, of uh, this world of the World Wide Web. And already the frenzy to publish is remarkable. The opportunities are heralded by many as being dramatic, dramatic for entrepreneurs. The stock market uh, has paid attention, uh, often making more headlines than the products themselves. Um, and uh, uh, the, the opportunities, the excitement is really is there in a very positive way. The technology is enabling new possibilities for many domains of application. I think education will experience profound changes as the availability of information grows. But uh, my theme for the education environment has been to not only encourage kids to surf the net, but to teach them how to make waves. I think that's the central difference and the opportunity that we must promote as much as possible, not the browsing of information or retrieving only of information, but the creative moment by which they take what they've learnt and refine it, create something new, and publish something. Putting something out there for others, to me, is the strongest possibility for the learning opportunities. Distance learning will become an improved opportunity. And there are already those who talk about the destruction of universities because of the appearance of the World Wide Web. I don't think that'll happen so quickly, uh, but I think we'll come to understand what it is that a face-to-face -face motivational experience encounter in a classroom brings and what it is that we can do by distance education, by video, um, by World Wide Web, and by team projects in that environment. Critics have said that this is just a short-term issue, a bubble, and the technological uh, a mud pool, maybe, uh, that it reaches only a small number of people, uh, that uh, the, today's New York Times has a controversial discussion about how many users there really are on the Internet and how many are using the World Wide Web. Uh, certainly, we've moved past the hundreds of thousands to the millions, the question is whether we're up to the tens of millions and how will we get to the hundreds of millions. There are profound concerns I have and others as well about what this means as a society. If in fact this is some wonderful opportunity but it's accessible only to a small number of people, that will be a sad result. Secondly, if this tool does not come under the common sense of standards and orientation and cataloging that make it truly accessible, the chaos of the web will uh, defeat the potential for great advances. So I think we need to focus on both of those opportunities, both of those challenges about how do we make sure that this is accessible and provides services to the widest possible range of people. One of the challenges has been the technology for making it available. Um, the platforms that are needed to run the web are fortunately not uh, overwhelming. They are lower, it is possible on standard machines to have um, uh, access to the web and through commercial services. The pricing is still an impediment for many. One of the directions that myself and others during the past year have proposed to push industry towards the direction of creating low-cost machines whose purpose is to browse the web. My own term for that has been the web top browser instead of a laptop browser. And here's my mock-up of what I'd like to see. Here's my new computer, about that thick. And you open it up and you get about two pages of display. Uh, website thin LCD color display touchable surface, no moving parts, and on the left you can see the web page of our laboratory, the Human Computer Interaction Lab, um, which shows information about the lab. And If you touch, you can click and jump to the next spot uh, and follow information further along from uh, our lab. If we move to the right, the other page shows just an ordinary website of the White House. Um, 
executive branch, first family, uh, tours, and variety of information, nice color image, and we could browse that by clicking on these, uh, these terms. Uh, the idea of this web top mock-up is to promote a comfortable, thin, portable device which would have no moving parts, no hard disk, no floppy, no keyboard to get in the way, maybe a little battery power, maybe a little wire for uh, our connection, uh, but maybe wireless would be uh, acceptable. And uh, I could take it very comfortably and select items and browse uh, uh, along the web, or I could have at least you know, two pages or maybe more, and the goal would be to build such a device for about $100. I think we're three to five years away from building such a device, but I think we need to chart a course which will promote the idea of low-cost web devices which can be accessible to, uh, to most citizens. So one aspect is the price and accessibility and also the services that are available. The other aspect is design. And therein is the substance of this hour of discussion. Those of you who have been out on the web have seen lots of varieties, some of them good, some of them bad. And in fact, we have very poor understanding of what makes for a good or a bad website. The number of empirical studies of users is small. Our, my own students have done a variety of them, but um, they're just pilot studies. I think getting better understanding of the design param parameters will be essential for giving us the base for scientific and thoughtful decision making that makes for effective websites. So my presentation today is trying to lay out the territory, make a theory, if you will, a cognitive model, a philosophy, a guideline for website design based on what we know about general user interface and human computer interaction. But I have to say that we need to validate these and test these the principles that I'm about to describe in the environment of the web design itself. Okay.